Hello everyone, this is Ray Space, and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. Blue Origin is apparently preparing New Glenn for stuff, and maybe we'll see a launch at some point, hopefully soon. But it did give me an idea, seeing New Glenn, photos of New Glenn's first stage, and that idea is putting the SLS boosters on the side of New Glenn. Yep, that's right. Uh, we're going to turn New Glenn into S an SLS replacement. Straight up, straight up SLS replacement. Uh, it probably would need to be strengthened. The worst thing about this is the color scheme, obviously. Uh, having those, those stripes next to this blue, it's horrible. That is by far the worst thing about this. Uh, but the other bad thing about this is we still have the sort of skirt with the landing legs. We don't need that for this version because uh, well, it's not coming back. The core will have to be disposed of. It would get too far out and it would definitely burn up. So we don't need that. And if we didn't have that, we could probably bring the SRBs in, especially since we only have four of the BE4 engines that would normally be on New Glenn on here. It normally has seven. And that's because we don't need seven, as far as I can tell because uh, it doesn't have to lift off just on the power of those seven engines, it's got the boosters, right? So there's no point putting extra engines on, especially since we're going to dump them. So uh, the BE4s have about the same amount of thrust as the RS25s on regular SLS, and they only need four of those, so we have four of these. So basically that's how it shakes up. Otherwise New Glenn more or less is in the same ballpark as the core of SLS, but with a more powerful upper stage. It's got a larger upper stage, 7 meters in diameter, but also longer. Uh, EUS is 8.4, but it's shorter. And EUS has four 100 kilonewton engines. New Glenn has two 670 kilonewton engines, so much more power, about 1,300 kilonewtons compared to 400. So it's got that powerful, heavier upper stage, but it's not quite as efficient as the RL10s. The RL10s have better specific impulse, better efficiency, and also they're lighter overall. Uh, the engines, the BE4, sorry, BE3Us that are on the second stage in here somewhere uh, are heavier. So there's that. And also the stage is probably heavier. So I have decided that what we're going to put on here is just the 37 tons that SLS Block 1B is rated for, and I think that's basically all we can expect this to do. We'll take a look and see when I test launch it. So just 37 tons, but with that it would be a direct replacement for SLS Block 1B. And what are the pros and cons on this? Well, the pro is that they can make New Glenn faster, hopefully they can make New Glenn faster than they can make the SLS cores, uh, though granted we haven't really seen that in practice yet, uh, but potentially, potentially the BE4s are cheaper than RS25s, I think that's probably safe to say. Probably the core of New Glenn is cheaper than the core of SLS, uh, probably even the upper stage is cheaper than the EUS, so there's all that as far as benefits are concerned, and if we can get it to launch the same stuff over to the moon, well that's uh, that, that positive. So. Let's see if it can do it. Well, with the shading on the boosters, uh, orange doesn't show up so much, so it's not too bad. All right, well, let's try and line up with the moon and everything, too. All right, here we go. SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition of the BE-4s. And ignition of the SRBs, and off we go. So technically, the main challenge will be strengthening the core of this, but it's a good question how much you really need to do because it's made to come back down with a lot of stress. It's carrying a very heavy upper stage. And the total thrust of the seven engines is about the same as one of the boosters. So I'm not sure how much they would need to do. It certainly wasn't designed to have two boosters on the side, and we know that 
Falcon 9 needed to be strengthened to have the Falcon 9 boosters on the side. So Falcon Heavy, the core needed to be strengthened for the boosters, and the cores are very different from the boosters on the Falcon Heavies. Probably should be flat. But I figure that whatever strengthening needs to happen, performance-wise it's not going to make a lot of difference because we can remove the landing legs and the fins. So we're taking some mass off and then putting a little bit of mass on. Okay. And I'll go for two minutes and eight seconds. Please reset. And at this point we should have a thrust weight ratio of one. Yeah, basically just like the RS-25s would. So three minutes and 20 seconds to burn. So a shorter burn time overall than the core of SLS. I'll wait until second stage ignition to separate off the fairings. Though we could get rid of them here and save ourselves some trouble. Contemplating a name for this thing, I guess we can call it BLS. Uh, though acronyms like that are a pain in the rear end. But we could call it the Blue Origin Launch System or Bezos launch system, either way. Sort of convenient like that, I suppose. I already got a new Armstrong, which was a rework of Saturn V using the engines from Blue Origin. So we used the BE4s on the first stage and then the BE3Us in the second and third stage. Yeah, at these speeds, this score isn't coming back. On the right side, it finishes just shy of 4 Gs. So. Oh! Oh no! Oh no! I need Separatrons on the core. <laughs> There's something weird about that decoupling, though. The upper stage probably shouldn't be knocked around like that on decoupling. It's like this something odd going with the colliders there, so it's a bit of a problem. Hopefully adding the Separatrons will help, but, well, we'll try it again. SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. And launch. Okay, booster set time at two minutes and eight seconds. And set. Taking as many precautions as I can. RCS on, kill rotation. All right, separation. Okay, ignition. But it still sort of kicked it. It sort of tilted a bit, so... Definite problems there. Okay, fairing set. At least those go off nicely. So, how are we doing? Uh, 2,400 to orbit. We should have enough to transfer it to the moon. Okay, and shut down. We are in orbit, and let's see how much delta V we have. 3,383. Well, that should be enough. Let me just plot it, just to be sure about it. I mean... All right, yep, with 200 meters per second to spare, and having released the fairings after the second stage ignition, uh, which is a sort of conservative way of doing it. Uh, we have enough. I'll just go ahead and do the burn. Even though my video card is going to hate me because of all the volumetric clouds that it has to display. Oh, but it's going to be nighttime. I think it still hates nighttime too. Okay. Coming to the end of the burn. And shut down. Let's see, some RCS maybe. Alright, that's basically that. We've got 37 tons to the moon, and we probably can't do too much more than that. So it's basically the same as SLS, and I don't expect that the low Earth orbit capacity would be any different. It's probably a little bit better and easier because of the stronger upper stage. Uh, SLS wasn't really designed for low Earth orbit. So, yep, 
It is on its way to the moon with, the, well, I mean, we would separate the payload. 37 tons. There you have it. Um, New Glenn can replace the core and upper stage of SLS as long as it has the SLS boosters. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.